Guys, Tesla's website says the Cybertruck only charges at 250 kilowatt max charging speed. It does, Tesla does say it will charge faster than its other 250 kilowatt charging EV, such as the Model 3, the Model Y, the Model S, and the Model X. But this actually isn't true. The Cybertruck charging speed is not what Tesla has been claiming, according to Tesla themselves in a video that was published only hours ago. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Lars Moravi was interviewed by Top Gear within, actually within the past two days. And he said that it's true that Tesla Cybertruck only charges at 250 kilowatt charging speed on existing Tesla V2 and V3 superchargers. But he says that on Tesla's new V4 superchargers, it actually charges faster than that. It charges at 350 kilowatt. So right now on our V3 superchargers, they, they only go up 250 kilowatts, but on our V4 ones that just started rolling out, yep. you get 350 kilowatts. So this will take all of it and it'll charge super fast. 350. Yeah. Wow. So that will charge in... I mean, I know we shouldn't think naught to 100, we should think 20 to 80. 80. Yeah, 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 that kind of thing. Now, he said this in the presence of the head designer of the Cybertruck who agreed. So that's two people from Tesla saying the Cybertruck charges at 350 kilowatt max charging speed. So Lars Moravi is the vice president of vehicle engineering at Tesla. I think he probably knows more about what's going on with the Cybertruck than Elon Musk does, who obviously Musk is running all these different companies. Lars actually was the main person in charge of Cybertruck development. And in the interview on Top Gear's website, uh, Top Gear's YouTube channel, by the way, he talks a lot about the details on the Cybertruck, where the headlights are. The headlights are not where you think they are. They're not at the top of the vehicle where the light bar is. They're actually below, underneath the bumper. Another interesting fact, the aerodynamic features in the Cybertruck are really detailed. They've done things like make the gaps between the bumper, the bottom bumper, and the actual front a certain width so that the airflow can flow at a certain radius around the wheel, which improves aerodynamic efficiency. The single moto massive wiper, I think it's four foot long, it's enormous. Uh, it is actually the, the key reason that they used that big wiper was because it's more aerodynamically efficient than having any other design. The other, the other big change here that they talked about in the video was that the windscreen, the windscreen is curved, it has a slight curve to it. And part of the reason for that is if the windscreen was flat, it would be very loud. You hear a boom, 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 boom from the wind noise. Having that curved windscreen makes the wind noise come down enormously. One of the things that was interesting in the video that you might not have seen, the rear doors of the Cybertruck, they open further than doors than I've seen on any other car. They open all the way out to a complete 90 degree angle, meaning you can fit things in your car. Like uh, for example, if you want to fit a big flat screen television into the rear, the rear, the rear area, the back seat area, you can't do that on most cars because you can't open the doors all the way. But because you can open the doors all the way, you can actually fit bigger things in. These guys have just thought of so many tiny details, it's amazing. Now they also talk about why they didn't put any door handles on the Cybertruck. You can see there's no door handles. They said for one, it's quite hard to, you add the manufacturing process of cutting out the holes for the door handles. That was, that was apparently gonna cost more money. Plus it would be more aerodynamically inefficient. So it's more efficient to not have door handles. So that's part of the reason why they put the button. So you press the button and the door pops out for you. And obviously you can actually open the door with the keys, the key card as well. So anyway, the main thing for me that I thought was surprising, we all thought the Cybertruck would be fast, would have faster charging capability with an 800 volt architecture. It's the first electric car ever and first car ever to have a wire, drive-by wire steering. So basically digital steering. It's not actually connected via a cable to the steering wheels. So that's one of the big innovations of the Cybertruck. But of course, a 48 volt battery technology. But of course, one of the amazing things about the Cybertruck is it's 48 volt battery tech, plus it's 800 volt circuitry. And all of this does add up to the Cybertruck charging at a faster speed than any of Tesla's other cars. It's just a matter of can you charge at that speed? There's not very many chargers around that will charge at 350 kilowatt. This is kind of an interesting idea though, guys, because you can see other manufacturers such as Porsche and Kia and Hyundai 
saying their cars can charge at 350 kilowatt, but then they don't tell you. There's not really any places that you can charge them at that speed. Very, very, very few of them. And in fact, you can probably count them on one hand in say, for example, in most states in America and Australia and Europe as well. So Tesla's done that. They've come out and said, you know what? It charges at 250 kilowatt. And the reason is because it actually can charge faster than that. But we're going to say 250 kilowatt because there's not really any access yet to 350 kilowatt charges. When there is access, then they'll probably upgrade the specs on the website to reflect the, tr the Cybertruck's true charging capability, which is 350 kilowatt charging speed. Thanks for watching.